Buckle up, friends. There's a lot to unpack in this one. I won't spend any time on the actual content of today's Pokemon Presents. It was awful. Instead, I want to dive into an apparent leak that preceded this show and something attached to that leak that implies new Switch hardware is coming sooner rather than later, specifically next winter. This post showed up on Reddit back on the 24th, this past Friday, and if you watched Pokemon Presents, first of all, I'm sorry, that was a travesty. But secondly, you'll see that it tracks almost perfectly with the content of the presentation, with a little extra tidbit at the end that a lot of you might find particularly compelling. That's right, DLC 2 will include an additional graphics update for a new Switch that has not been announced yet. Is it true? Well, I'm going to say that it is, even though on the surface level it seems to contradict a lot of what I've talked about on this channel of late. Let's do some sleuthing. First, I'm going to talk about how I evaluate these kinds of leaks and rumors, and I'll use a recent example in the February Nintendo Direct. Before any information was locked in about it, one leaker posted that it would be February 8th, along with a list of games that would be announced as part of the show, which included bold claims like Bot and Kaitos. This was substantial because most people who track this stuff had the Direct penciled in for the following week, around the 15th, so this was a very specific claim. Once the Direct was confirmed to be on the 8th, that lent a lot of credence to all of the associated claims like Bot and Kaitos. Another less direct example is the all-but-confirmed Tears of the Kingdom Switch OLED model. Why is it all-but-confirmed? Well, initial leaks were dismissed out of hand as a bad Photoshop job, but there were certain design details on it that would soon become pertinent as information would come out about the game's Collector's Edition, which includes much of the same imagery that had not been associated with the game prior, except on the leaked Switch OLED, thereby validating the leak. This works the same way, because the leaker nailed every single facet of the DLC very specifically. Not only does that validate the bit about new hardware, I'd go as far as to call it a confirmation. Although the timetable may be a little off due to the nature of our leaker's work. I'll get to that. So we know that it exists, but what is it? Based on the timetable alone, we know that it's a Switch Pro, not a next-gen console. It's no secret that Nintendo just started development on new hardware, meaning that the spec just got locked in and dev kits are being produced and sent to developers right about now. If this is a next-gen machine, we're talking about something like a two- to three-year development cycle for launch games. Native Switch games with an extra spec cooked in for a higher-end machine is a much different, much simpler matter. By process of elimination, any hardware that is released within the next year is an upgrade, not a successor. So what if the Digital Foundry claim about the Switch Pro being cancelled due to production woes brought on by the pandemic. My theory is that it wasn't cancelled so much it was mothballed, put aside temporarily until production became practical again. Were Nintendo Studios in on the plan? Can we count on a wide range of games being Switch Pro enhanced once this machine comes down? That'll be one of the big storylines to keep an eye on as this plays out. At least we can safely assume at this point that yes, there will be an E3 adjacent Nintendo Direct, and that it will be about the Switch Pro, or whatever they end up calling it. Now that that's out of the way, what kind of timetable are we looking at? Why am I not convinced that putting it right alongside the second Pokemon DLC is a sure thing? Well, reading the original Reddit post, our leaker is a third-party contractor working with Game Freak on the DLC, not an in-house developer who might be more closely connected to the hardware timeline plans. This tells me that the dates given in the leak are more likely tied to project deadlines than anything else. Nintendo may want the graphics update ready to go alongside the second DLC pack, but that might not necessarily mean they're ready to launch in December. Don't be too disappointed if the Switch Pro slips to the first quarter 2024, as is their inclination. Still beats the hell out of Pokemon Sleep, doesn't it? Of course, there's one more elephant in this room, and that's the Tears of the Kingdom OLED. I don't have the slightest doubt that the plan was to keep the Switch Pro on the down low until after all of these OLEDs had sold through, no matter how many OLED buyers they may piss off in the process. This is going to be an interesting situation to watch now. Does Nintendo play dumb and go ahead with the Zelda OLED this spring and the Switch Pro in the winter? Do they come clean about the Switch Pro now that word is out just so everyone knows exactly what they're signing up for? Or do they kick the Switch Pro a little further down the calendar to create some distance between the two? There are a lot of possibilities, no question, and I don't think there are any that will actually satisfy everybody. I just found it curious that the leaker used the plural in reference to new Nintendo Switch models coming out. This could be a language barrier thing, but it could also be implying that the Switch Pro could be coming in both regular and light varieties. Just something to keep an eye on. Finally comes the issue of pricing. Nintendo's long-term strategy has always involved staying out of the broader hardware race with Sony and Microsoft and using that discrepancy to undercut them. So I believe a wave of price drops are coming for the Switch models on the market right now. $500 is a non-starter for the Switch Pro, and while I don't think $400 hundred dollars is out of the question, the PS4 Digital Edition would still loom pretty large if they did that, and I don't think that's even a comparison Nintendo wants to invite. I think we see a wave of price cuts on the Switch line we have available right now, with the hybrid model retailing for $350 once the dust finally settles. We'll have to wait and see, though.
much like a lot of this story. And that's all for now. If you like this video, then please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe as it really helps the channel. Click the notification bell to know right away when the next video drops. I'm Patrick Mifflin, and I'll see you again soon.